What's up, guys? Welcome to the Pause Where I Play podcast. We're so glad to have you here today. We are ripe and ready to talk about BVS. But as always, we got to dive in and get the deets beforehand and kind of, what's the word here? Get reacquainted with everyone. So uh, we got the whole crew in the house. We got Vince and Josh. So uh, Vince, how you been, man? Bum, 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 bum. I'm sorry. I hate that with the Batman part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. It's the bat. Every time like Bruce looks in the screen in this movie, they do the bomb, 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 and it drives me crazy. So they so. do the same thing with the Wonder Woman soundtrack every time she's yeah. fighting her on the screen. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, they do it with all of them. Which, Everyone like, has their own thing. Not right? to like jump into like <laughs> the movie too far yet, but they do the exact same thing with Superman. You hear the like the the low like melodic theme like the dun 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 dun, that i talked about so much in our last episode talking about man of steel they bring that back in the same way as well for superman lex has his but i actually like i like wonder woman's and i like lex's anyway i'm doing good good (laughs) how are you doing man i'm doing good i uh i'm living life i did a bunch of procrastinating this week and uh I hate myself for it, but I got a lot of other things done that were super important <laughs> at the same time. But here I am, ready to talk BVS. What Great. about you, Josh? I'm doing solid. It's just been a lot of work, a lot of chilling lately, like nothing too crazy. I've been trying to hit my steps more than I have in the past because I brought my Fitbit out. I had put away for a while and I've been wearing it and... I work at home and I don't move around a lot besides to take my dog out. And there are a lot of days where I'm looking and I'm like laying down to go to bed and I'm like, ah, 2,500 steps. (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) And so I've been trying to do a lot better on that. And so just working, working out, taking Finn on huge long walks. That's, that's been the life lately. My like goal every day is to like get 30 minutes of dog walking in and then that's outside of like taking them to the park and running around and doing crap. But this past week I went on two hikes with my dogs. And for my sake, I did two and a half and three and a half miles both days. But we got to the one turning around point with June and she just straight up was like, dude, I'm out of shape too. I'm tired. We haven't been hiking this much in a long time. 800 feet of elevation is a lot for me. I was like, okay, June, we'll, we'll take it easy. So we took a couple of days off. And now every time we get in the car and we drive out towards Lake Mountain, they whine. They're like, no. Cause they're like ready to go. But let's make a pact that by the time the Snyder cut comes out, we'll all look like Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill in this movie. Deal. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> do that in a week. That, that's like a week, isn't yeah, it? It's like, it's like in four days or something. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I do know of a costume shop that might have one of those like. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Like, what are those like silicone bodies? I like, can put over. Like, grab some an egg carton and put it under my shirt for the abs. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> have you guys seen? Uh, so Vince, I think you watched the new Hellboy, right? Yeah. So so don't. I'm not. I'm not here to get disappointed in it. But like the the special effects, like the costume and stuff like that, on uh-huh. David Arbor, or however you say his name. He does not look like the body at all. He just has like a super fit like suit that goes over the top of oh, it. Oh, really? Like I will still show you a picture. It's like him putting on the suit and it's just like, oh, I look like that. I could be a superhero. <laughs> he did get like a little bit more in shape for the role, I know. But he's also definitely, I mean, we've got Black Widow coming up here not too long from now. Like you've seen the trailers where he's like, oh, still fits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. I'm glad that glad that we all have this vision, Vince, and you, that you started it today. I'll get I'll get working a thousand a thousand crunches tonight. Then I'll be like just like. Actually, I want to talk about this too. I think Affleck deserved a lot more love. So yeah, let's get into this, uh, Vince. You been watching anything good lately? Uh, nothing like crazy, crazy off the top of my head. Um, we talked a little bit before. I mean, WandaVision ended. Right. Everybody happy with how WandaVision ended without going into it too much? Eh, it's fine. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. It was good. It was, they stuck the landing, but uh, I had issues with some things. And I think that was because of my own expectation and, or hope of what they were going to do with it. And when they didn't do it, I was kind of like, eh, okay. But it was fine. It all came together fine. Um, other than that, uh, remember a couple weeks ago or last time we talked, I think it talked, I think it was, we uh, mentioned Machete Kills somehow or Machete, the Machete movies. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. I had never seen a Machete movie. 
I went over to my brother's brother-in-law's house and he's like, I just need a brain dead action movie. So we're flipping through Netflix and guess what we came upon? Machete kills. <laughs> we jumped right into that second movie. I freaking love that movie so much. <laughs> it's a really purposely bad B action movie that is just, it's just, it's just fun. It's fun. I love that, uh, um, well, what's the director's name? I, I, uh, Robert Rodriguez. Sorry, I have space his name. I love Rod- Robert Rodriguez's random movies that he does. Like, he just for for a few years just decided to do random B movies, you know. And he did one with like Quentin Tarantino too. And I don't know. I really like the guy. I think his production company's awesome. I think they do some pretty unique stuff that no one else does. So that's about it for me. Other than um, we all watch Nomadland, but we can get into that in a little bit. What did you guys watch? Yeah. Josh, what about you? Um, I've been trying to see a few more of like the award season movies, especially as we have the Oscar nominations coming out tomorrow and everything. Um, so I watched Nomadland. I also watched... Um, I already mentioned Minari in a previous one. I'm trying to remember. There was one more that's like on that slate of like, hey, here are movies that are like being released in award season, but I can't remember. So I'll just skip it. Um, My main thing lately has been Narcos. I am waist deep in Narcos and I am loving it. I've never seen it before and I'm watching it and it's really crazy to like think about all that stuff and like distinguish like what actually happened from like what's in the story and it's also really crazy because I'll talk to my wife about it because her dad grew up in Colombia in Cali like while this was all happening he was like a teenager slash young adult so it was super crazy um but yeah just like I don't remember exactly the other ones that I've watched but I know that I've been sort of like trying to hit all those all the awards movies that I've been like interested in before we get to the end of the year or before we get to the Oscars at least so I can I'm, form my opinions. I'm going to start doing that tomorrow because that's right. This week is when the Oscars list yep, comes out tomorrow morning. I don't know when this is released, but it's like, so March 15th, early in the morning, they'll release it tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, once that comes out, I'll look at it and see what's actually nominated and, and start to make my way through them. I've seen a few of them though. I think that are going to be up there. Promising Young Woman, Nomadland. Um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. This one I need to see. Trials of Chicago 7 also. So. Judas and the Black Messiah. That one's solid. I got to watch that one. You got to watch it quick. I think they're taking it off HBO Max here soon. Oh, yeah. Check it out. It's great, man. I love that one. What about you? What have you been watching? Oh, uh, mostly I watched uh, Letter Kenny. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> pitter patter. Let's get going. Like so, I love Letter Kenny so much. And what's funny is this: before we talked about it a couple podcasts ago, someone else has said, "Dude, Letter Kenny is something you'd be super into." Because like, there's like a huge part of me that's still like this small town boy that just like grew up on a farm and like loves everything farm humor and agriculture humor related and so i've been watching that i'm on like halfway through season two so but i don't know how many seasons there are i think there's nine and i think there's like six episodes in every season so there's not a lot that's fantastic i might be farther along i might be in season three i don't know probably it's fantastic i uh love wayne i love the I love Derry. I love the I love them all like the the trio there and the sister. They're so good. Um and then You like Letter Kenny, and that's what I appreciate about you, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I always <laughs> I didn't I actually spent less time like on technology this week because it was my spring break for school that all my teachers assigned me a plethora of work for. Ugh. Thank you and no thank you, teachers. It's supposed to be a break. For my mental sanity. Sorry, rant and done. But anyhow, uh, so I actually spend more time with my dog just outside, just kind of like disconnecting because I'm I'm super burned out of uh, working from home, doing school from home and uh, being at home. So I went outside into the wilderness and it was great. I found a mine. Oh. I want to go back up and go down into the mine. Mm. Careful with that. <laughs> I've seen, I've read a few Tom Sawyer and other books that might, you know, say you shouldn't do that. I been... got a brother-in-law who has had to rescue multiple people from mines this last summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't go back in them very far. Like, like usually, like if there's like six to eight feet, you can go in. Just as mount. long as you don't have to rappel down into them. I oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because those are the ones that he's had to rescue people is like. Have, have you seen the cave? 
Have you seen The Descent? Yes. <laughs> have you seen what happens in caves? Have you seen The Hills Have Eyes? <laughs> like, that's what goes in my mind. The deeper into a cave, like, like a mine I go, like, there's got to be some, like... Balrog <laughs> hiding in the deep. Yeah, literally, that's how I feel. But I just spent less time on my uh, stuff this week, and it was good. It was fine. Good. But yeah. uh, I watched what was important, which was Letter Kenny. I'm so happy you like it. <laughs> I remember, so this wasn't necessarily for this award season because it just barely came out yesterday, but the one I remembered that I watched was Cherry, Tom oh. Holland's new feature, which is not doing great critic score wise on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's around like 35, 40%. Although, and they basically, the reason that they say is like this story kind of fumbles around and does its thing and it doesn't exactly know where it's going and stuff. But Tom Holland's performance kind of makes it worth a watch anyway so even though a lot of them are like okay maybe this movie isn't the greatest like tom holland is like doing things guys and we know that he's already kind of been branching out like i don't remember if you guys saw the devil all the time but he was excellent in that and it's a very different sort of role for him and this is also a very similar thing cherry and i don't want to like spoil anything but just cherry he portrays he goes through very deep emotions he goes through a ton of different things and so that's definitely a recommend. It's on Apple TV Plus. Um, so I watch it with a buddy since I don't have that. But it was very, very cool. Cherry is good. So I guess we should probably get into the main, the main portion of our episode now. Yes, and I'm pumped because I freaking was stoked to watch this. And I watched like the extended cut too, the extra 37 minutes oh, or whatever. Oh, better have all watched yeah. the extended cut. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I don't know what the difference was. But, There's like, about I an hour's it. worth of difference in it. I, like, I watched <laughs> it. I just don't. I'd never seen the original one all the way through before. So I don't know like what was included this one that wasn't before. Well, yeah. You might have to let me know. Vince will be able to tell us. But anyhow, like, let's get into it. Batman versus Superman. Dawn of Justice. So I didn't look up all the information before I got here. Sorry, it's been a busy morning. Um, but just I'm going to scroll through the IMDb of uh, Batman v Superman. The movie came out almost exactly five years ago. So it was released March 25th, 2016. So we're like, next week is the five-year anniversary. So this is kind of working out, you know? Um, The movie was directed by Zack Snyder, written by Chris Terrio, uh, David S. Goyer, um, with characters created by Bob Kane, Bill Finger, Jerry Seigel, Joe Shuster, William Moulton Marston, Um, The movie is starring Ben Affleck as Batman, Bruce Wayne, Henry Cavill as Clark Kent, Superman, Amy Adams as Lois Lane, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, um, Jeremy Irons as Alfred, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, just a freaking killer cast here. Just so many good actors in this. So the movie on IMDb got a 6.4 rating on Flickster. It got a 28% critic score and a 63% audience score. So critics really hate this movie. <laughs> and honestly, if you get on the internet, there's a they're very big audience that absolutely hate this movie. Like, hate, hate, hate this movie. Why? That is a good question. And I think the answer is because the studio neutered it, cut out an hour of the movie, made it jumbled and messy, and the flow was off, story and beats in the movie got confused. It just, I remember seeing this in the theater years and years and years ago and walking out with that same like was that good why did it feel so rushed and having to like justify it like oh well maybe that kind of I guess it kind of felt like a comic book or something where it's like in each frame you just get what you need and then it moves on to the next thing because they cut out a ton of footage in these movies in in their theatrical cut and they shortened up scenes so literally they would have scenes where the actors would just say what they needed to say to progressed the movie and then moved on so it was like you'd go to the jesse eisenberg in the in the library with the senator scene and they'd say what they needed to say and then it just cuts to something different and so it just felt just like a mess bloated continuity was just terrible it was just really really bad and then i just think that a lot of people weren't into this version of superman and batman this uh self-serious very depressing at times version of a a hero like Superman who is supposed to be like the best of us and the hope in the world and blah, blah, blah. But it's more of a Superman or a Batman movie than a Superman movie here. It was. And um, I think there's a lot of things. Um, Talking to my buddy who's just like way into Superman, I was texting him throughout the entire movie last night. Just like we were just talking about it as I I was going through it. And his version of Superman is, is not 
this BVS Superman, you know, uh, this Superman is very conflicted, um, depressed because everything he does is met with conflict and criticism. And we're told that people love him, but we're never shown, you know, really people loving him or, or him like doing things and people like praising him, not praising him, but just like thanking him or whatever. All we see is the political conflict. And I think that people are used to the Marvel formula of running around, having action sequences, having a lot of fun, getting a funny quip, having some serious and like interesting, um, bigger themes, but not really focusing on them, just focusing a little more on the characters and not on the effect that the character has on the world like this one does. So I don't know. It it could be a lot of things. Me personally, I love this movie and every time I watch it, I love it even more. Even though it's bloated, it's long. After Batman and Superman have their fight, there's still 40 minutes left of the movie where they fight Doomsday for some reason. Like, there's so much packed into this. We talked about it last week, how Superman is a bloated movie and how we could they could make easily make two or three movies out of Superman, that one story. This could have been two seasons of TV, you know, (laughs) just there is so much built into this and there's so much and it moves so fast that you can't really, I couldn't really register and like hold on to certain things that are happening, like Lex's plot and Lex's involvement throughout the entire movie. To answer your question, there's probably a lot of reasons people don't like this movie. Um, I would like to hear what you guys think about it because I have just been defending this movie since the extended cut ever came out. But I am, uh, I think, in a pretty niche fandom. So uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I like this film a lot, and I like the I like the idea of a darker superhero universe. And a lot of people are getting that with the boys, right? Is that what it is on on Amazon? But what I think is like interesting for a lot of reasons about this film is I think that the reactions of the people in the movie would be the modern reactions of citizens of the world because today, today like, that's what it is it's it's built for today this isn't the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s superman this is superman of today who grew up during our era and now has everyone with their damn cell phones and like their opinions on this that is saying well that's not right you owe it to society and like like it even shows cancel culture in this which is such a hot and divisive topic right now and What's super interesting is like they don't really tackle that in Marvel as much. Like they don't really tackle the responsibility of the superhero and the actions that take while they're defending the earth because lives were lost. And like what's interesting is like Bruce Wayne shows that he's like paying people for the damages that they've incurred because of what happened to the Wayne Tower during and his businesses. But like Superman got off scot free pretty much in this. He just got a bunch of hate and we see where he goes and like people are like, "Oh, Superman, thank you." You know, and like pretty much like a me some part from uh Game of Thrones. I, I, but I just have to jump in. I'm so glad that you brought this up because this is I thought the exact same thing watching it. It's just so reflective on society today and how we just can't agree on anything. I mean, we, we're just on the tail end, hopefully, on a pandemic that couldn't even make America... United. You know, united again. So, like, think of a superhuman comes in and starts doing all these things. People are going to be discussing whether or not it's right, and they're going to be conflicted on their feelings of it. It's going to immediately become po- political. And I mean, as soon as he goes and helps someone in Russia, then all of the news agencies are going to jump on top of that and like really dissect that on whether or not he's for America or against America. And then that's going to like make, yeah, it just spurs conflict. Well, and it spurs up the conflict of religion and creation and like everything that everyone holds so dear. This puts us all in a corner and we have to reevaluate our place in the universe, but also there are millions of people who would have to look at their faith again and say, well, what is the story? what is the facts and that would really cause additional conflict and stuff with this so it's it's a movie that was built if i were to have a conversation with the writers and the director right zack snyder i would want to know did he put this in as as a purposeful thing because i guarantee he did as a way to to make us think and and like not only to give us just the glorification of fighting and hero saving the world but to give us the deeper thing of what we'd actually be thinking and what we'd be experiencing versus just like ah heroes 
was. I felt like there was a lot of that in this movie in that there was a lot of like looking inward at far, as far as like what it would look like in like a real modern day thing. There's real conflicts between people, whereas Batman, especially because he incurred damages and his family incurred and just like so many people lost so much that, you know, it sort of is like doing that same thing where they're trying to look at, okay, what if there was actually real consequences? Like we talked about last time, Man of Steel, you know, like so much happened and like people died in the movie and we talked about how that incurred like sort of a like a criticism of sorts from a lot of people right and so they sort of try to address that with batman you know coming in bruce wayne he's taking damages in his tower and everything else and so he's trying to say this man can't just like get away with this yes obviously he stopped this guy from killing the world but that doesn't mean that like all these other damages all this stuff that happened it was just insane and a ton of people died and like something needs to be done about that. And so there's a lot of like good things that come in where we see that like they tried to fix what like some people said was like the mistake of Man of Steel with like everyone dying and stuff. They do a lot of that thing where it says, hey, what would it look like in the real world? They introduce a lot of characters and even like with the extended edition and I've only seen this once is like my very first time watching it. And you know, I'm not crazy big in like the DCEU or whatever. But even with that, I'm watching this movie, a lot of the movie, I was just looking at it and I was there with my buddy, we're watching it together. And I was like, wait, I'm like so confused. Like what are their like motivations for like fighting each other or like doing this thing or being mad about this? I was like, I don't get it. And I feel like obviously I can't even imagine what that must have been like in the shorter version of this movie when even in the three hour version at sometimes I'm like, I just feel like this wasn't explained or just wasn't clear enough to me, like why they were doing it. And there was a lot of things where I could have like gone out, go to the bathroom and come back and miss something. But I felt like it happened too many times where I was like, there's just so many things that I'm like missing motivations on in this movie where like it gets to big action scenes and I'm like, it's cool. And I eventually understand like, why the characters are doing what they're doing. But there were just like so many times where I was like, oh, I just don't like get it. And I don't like understand it. That wasn't to say I didn't like it. I did end up liking the movie. There were just a lot of times where I'm like, this just feels so like kind of surreal, like unmotivated and just like an excuse to like get Batman and Superman fighting each other. And then of course in the classic, this person versus this person movie team up at the end to fight something else. Well, and I feel, right, like, the hard part is, is this this deserved three origin movies beforehand, in my opinion. We need a Lex Luthor film, and it doesn't need to be a long film. It could have been, like, what DC could have done with this is created three, like, short 15-minute origin films for each of these to, like, pre-release for the movie to, like, get people hyped. Because we need to know what Superman's been up to. He's just not working at the Daily Planet, like, BSing. Like, Clark Kent's got to have, like, a record for bailing on work a little too often. And then we have, like, the like for Batman, right? Like what's really hard, especially in the Batman, like people didn't want Ben Affleck as, as the Batman, like they did not want him there. And, and like, he did a great job. Like it's so good. He did. And like, people need to stop being like idiots about this. Like he put on like, like Affleck is a great actor, but for stepping into the shoes that have been like played by so many other great actors and like having a place to fill, this wasn't what we saw Suicide Squad Joker. This was Batman. This was Affleck's Batman. And it was good. Like, like when he's like working out and getting like yoked, like you see all the scarring. Like they put a lot of thought into the backstory. Like he wasn't just this posh and polished, like perfectly unblemished character. He was like. So I want to know more about the Batman. I talked last time about the origin movies, how many came out at the time of Man of Steel and that kind of stuff. I kind of feel like they did the same thing with this. We've seen Batman's origin story so many times, we don't need an entire movie focused on Batman's origin story again. I think Zack Snyder made these movies with the idea that most of us know these guys, what they're doing, what they're up to, what their reason for doing what they're doing really is you know or or at least an idea everyone has an idea of superman everyone has an idea of batman and this is his version of that you know his batman as we see well, kills well and i don't want to say like oh we have to know like oh the cave again right like that's been hashed out but i'm like 
we need like a little bit of context before going into it. I would have loved that. I think that would have like hit a home run for this film and people would have like, like I'm not saying like you didn't understand or anything like that, but it would have been easier to digest. Like why is Lex Luthor like a, a creep? Why is he like maniacal? Why is he this way? Why is Batman so angry all the time? Yeah. Like we get hints towards it. We have the, the Robin suit in the Batcave hinting towards the Joker killing Robin. That would pay a toll on somebody. I didn't even see that. Now I want to look it up. Oh yeah. Check that out. It's got a, Joker's riding across the Robin suit. Oh, and Batman like yeah, walks up and looks up at it. You know, so like Bruce is for for what this movie is and how bloated it is, I feel like it does a really good job giving you an idea of what this version of Batman is and why he is the way he is. Because every version of Batman we've gotten in the past, his number one rule is I don't kill. Because once I kill, that's that's the one rule that I don't break. Because once I break that rule, I'm as bad as the bad guys. This version of Batman, he just completely admits, he's like, we're villains. He says, this, he says it to Alfred. He's just like, we're vin- villains. We've always been vi- criminals, is what he says. We're criminals. We've always been criminals. He's gotten to the point with, for, um, for 20 years of being Batman and then all of a sudden a god falling from the sky and destroying half of a city to being like, I'm done with this. And every criminal I stop, another one pops up. This could be my defining moment, getting rid of this god who destroys the, the planet. You know, So like that's the problem with these Zack Snyder movies is they're so bloated that you kind of have to fill in the gaps on your own through very small por- sentences of dialogue or very... S- small moments in the movie you know but someone like me who loves it who's seen this movie three or four times and dissect it and i think about it like i've been thinking about this movie since i watched it last night i fell asleep thinking about it i woke up i went on my walk and through my workout i was thinking about it you know these moments these themes these motivations and i can fill in those gaps if you watch it one time and forget about it it's a very confusing and convoluted movie but after the third or fourth time through, you start recognizing little things and little themes and it makes it better and better for me. And then I absolutely love Zack Snyder's style, the cinem- how cinematic things are and how he does the slow motion. And I love his color grading and I love the music's not as good in this movie as it was in Man of Steel, but I can forgive it, you know? It's to Hans Zimmer, right? Yeah. And it was Hans Zimmer and someone else, if I remember from the credits. It was like they both did it. So, mm-hmm. so I, I sort of felt the same way like sort of what Casey was talking about where it was, or no, it was you Vince who was talking about it, about, Hey, like we really kind of like know these people's origin stories or whatever. So we don't have to dive like too deep into it. But then there's also times during the movie where like motivations or whatever are unclear for certain characters. And I feel like even though the movie is already like bloated and like three hours, like was there not anything in the movie that you could like remove and like put some sort of scene or something that could maybe help with that. And I'm not saying that like this would have to be that way, but I feel like we also do have like so much of, you know, these characters backstories memorized and everything like that, that even like, what is it? It's like, there's like a five minute scene at the beginning where they do where Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Lauren Cohen are there as Batman's parents and they get shot and the beads fall in the sewer and he falls in the sewer and the bats fly around him where it's like, I like that, you know, like this this is like a kind of a staple of any sort of Batman movie. And especially since this is him like kind of getting introduced into like the DCEU that they still do it to show like, Hey, this is like what happened. But it's like, so, so old, you know, where it's like, even that, like, could you not have like, Shortened it up. Either shortened it, cut it, done something to leave more time for. Or just leave out the entire 45-minute fight with with uh, uh, Deathstroke it, or whatever. I can't. I just keep forgetting his name at the end of the movie. And then um, I feel like I do like, however, that like you mentioned, like after you've seen it a few times and you're thinking about it in different ways and everything, like you begin to understand more and you can see more. I do like that it's a movie that can like require thought because I feel like if a movie is like too simple, you feel like you're getting like talked down to like as an audience member where like, I feel like a movie that just lays literally everything in front of you and that requires no thought is like a brainless movie, which like we talked about before, like with the machete movies, like there are always places for those movies, but this like isn't meant to be a movie like that. So even though I've only seen it once and I'm like, okay, I was kind of confused. Like there's also definitely a chance that I watch it again. I understand more. I'm like, okay, I get this. And now I like understand a little bit more why these things are happening versus like me just being like, 
I'm friggin' confused. This movie's stupid or this movie's way too simple. So there's good and bad things about that. I think I think that's a fair fair way to put it. I I don't know. I liked the character depth in this though with Bruce Wayne's Batman cuz like nothing I'm I'm sorry if I'm going to offend people, but I will, but like the Batman trilogy that is Christopher Nolan's like I think that in the Careful. <laughs> in batman begins we had like a batman that needed like it's kind of interesting so in batman begins right like we see the bruce wayne that's struggling the bruce wayne is trying to find his place and the second and third we find a bruce wayne that is relevant as batman who knows his place who's fit in and then one that's like taking a break but is stepping into the same thing and i think that what's what's cool about this is that this batman has conflicts the entire time that he is nightmaring that he is seeing like by the way i did see that suit after all and i just didn't recognize it as the robin Mm. suit and so um but like there's so much to this this film and and like you said it's bloated i don't know what else that could have been done to make it better i guess but uh i i thought it was good the only thing that i could what i found myself thinking while i was watching it is how i think this would be better as a tv show like cut that up into hour long episodes, focus on specific things, get a little more character de- development, a little more mo- a little more conversation between characters or even certain, you know, I mean, the next movie is going to be cut up into chapters. He's announced that he's, he's let out the chapters. So it's going to play a thing out and then it's going to have a chapter heading and then it's going to go into the next thing. Really? You know? Yeah. So I kind of feel like watching Zack Snyder movies, like maybe this is the better way to do it. Show an hour of the movie, let people digest it think about it and then show the next piece instead of having three or four hours of just continuous stuff shoved into your brain and then forgetting half of the things that happened. I think that's great. Like here's the thing though is like WandaVision we kind of talked about that a little bit. I like that WandaVision was like broken up and there was like time to like kind of process things and I I wish that that would have been more of a thing to do because I think what's hard is like the big screen is every actor's dream like they want to be the star of the silver screen you know and now the streaming service is just as high quality of an opportunity to make money anymore and I think that m- movie houses uh, what movie studios sorry are thinking are recognizing that so I would hope that maybe they can get the band back together and they can do that but I don't know. I love that idea, though. I love that thought. Like, I would love it to be broken up better. Like, that could be, like, two seasons of a movie. Like, I take I take 12 hours of, like, Batman versus Superman and Lex Luthor and <laughs> discovering, you know, Diana Prince and all this. Like, I'm here for it. So, I don't know. And also, I liked Doomsday's part in this film, but I think that it would have been better as, like, an outside of this film like i think yeah. that they could have ganged up and fought him in a different Later. film like you like you said it's bloated there's too much going on because you have lex Luthor, you have batman superman and you have doomsday all in one film <laughs> it's a lot yeah plus the death of superman at the end and it's just like and then they have the nightmare sequence that goes on that's like establishing the new thing and then they have the whole like meta human theory going on which introduces the justice league for the next one like he just wanted to do a lot a lot in a very little amount of time. I like the nightmare sequences, by the way. I want I to love like talk about sequence. those cuz the nightmare sequences they brought actual humanity and fear and concern, but like what would a world look like if Superman like seized power and like what's kind of interesting is you have uh Stephen Wolf's like little f- flight critters in there. The parademon. Yeah, and then you have like it's just it's just pretty cool. And it also gives more understanding to Bruce's motivation through this. I mean, I love the way this movie starts. After I think it's after the opening credits, after the death of, of Bruce's parents, and then it gets to the destruction of Metropolis, of the Zod and Superman fight. And where was Bruce throughout this whole thing? And why has this moment affected Bruce so much? You know, he was there. He was watching people die. He was seeing the destruction. He recognized what these gods were capable of doing. And after years and years of fighting crime and basically doing, you know, not winning, seeing this thing. And again, again, I kind of mentioned it before, figuring out that this is his like one redeeming thing that if he can do this, then all the bad that he's done in the world and the, how deep he's gone down the rabbit hole of villainy of himself could be justified. And then you get the nightmare sequence where he has a vision of the future where Superman does become evil, you know? And it's kind of confusing there because he has like a dream within a dream, 
but he does see the flash standing there. And I, in my, I mean, this is me as a fan, like filling in context. It's not in the actual movie, but I assume that Bruce actually saw or lived that moment moment in the nightmare scene sequence and where he's killing people and where he's fighting off par- parademons and then wakes up and sees the flash which maybe that nightmare sequence was a was a side effect of the flash traveling through time to warn him that he got a glimpse into the future before actually speaking to him so that gives him even more motivation to be like i've seen what this can turn into if this man decides he doesn't want to be a protector and he wants to be a dictator we're screwed the world's taken over i'm not going to let that happen and it just gives bruce even more motivation just feeds into his rage even more meanwhile there's a line where lex when he's talking to uh, superman on top of the building he mentions that he has been prodding at bruce for the past two years to try to just make him matter and matter so he has all these things building and building on top of him and this is a very flawed human being until he just gives in to the bat you know in quotation marks like the bat is his evil side and he's he's always accepted that that's a part of him without wanting to cross that line of killing someone but this moment death of robin destruction of metropolis a god destroying his city feeling useless for the First time since probably his parents, you know, since he became the Batman, feeling like he doesn't stand a chance. He's just like, I've got to do something about this. And I think that's such a cool idea that even the best of us who you would never expect to cross that line, that one line that he has and give in to killing someone is pushed over that edge and has to gets pushed over that edge and into the darkness so far that he has to come back recognize that what he was doing wrong, recognize that Superman really is this beacon of hope, even though he is this controversial figure and end the movie with like brightness on the horizon that he can bring this Justice League together to stop whatever could come in the future. Well, well, Josh, like I, I like what we've been talking about, but I'm just curious, like Josh, like, did you have any favorite scenes? Like, what did you really enjoy about this film? So there's obviously a lot in this film. <laughs> it's uh, three hours long about and so there's a lot to like and or dislike. I think probably one of my favorite like scenes or favorite parts. So even though there were a couple of times during this scene where I commented, I'm like, this is just weird because it doesn't like feel as much like Batman. When Batman and Superman are battling there near the end and Batman's trying to get him with the old like Krypton kryptonite sword and stuff and batman is in like the big old like metal suit with the glowing eyes i'm like this is weird because it's like not what i'm used to seeing batman in as far as like you know obviously they're still big like hunky like suits and stuff but just like it being made of metal and just like so like silver sort of instead of black and very rigid at parts i was like this is very weird but seeing it in action and seeing that he literally made it because he changes later on and he made it like literally specifically for like this fight versus superman it kind of makes the movie and the fight make more sense because like if you ever ask anyone like all right like batman versus superman like who wins in a fight it's like okay well that's like an obvious like superman right but you see that because he's had this fear of you know him taking over the world and doing everything he's done his research he's prepped for it he got jacked like casey said he's doing all those pull-ups um and he just gets ready and he builds the suit specifically for this fight and he makes the kryptonite sword and stuff and so i thought that that scene like while it was i don't want to say just but like while it was like a big action scene like kind of like they're meant to be like all right now this is the part where they fight this is the batman versus superman that like was advertised to you you know like while that does happen and it's like oh it's a big fight there was a lot of thought that went into it and i thought that it was pretty freaking good well, and for that scene, I actually got some uh, Christopher Nolan vibes in parts of it, too, because like when he's like building an Alfred Pennyworth is like the Alfred in the show is like, I love the Alfred from the Christopher Nolan film. Jeremy Irons is perfectly cast as Alfred. Yes. Perfectly cast. <laughs> he does so good. And it's just like the coolest thing. And I don't know, like I got some. I love that part and like him building the like kryptonite grenades that like for like breathing in and stuff like good good call man like that was I also loved that suit too I was like 
because when they originally like marketed this film, one of the, the lines was like, so tell me, do you bleed? You know, like, so like when he like emerges in that suit, I remember just being like, Ooh, we might get something good. And so that's, that's how I felt about it. So good, good call on that one. What about you, Vince? Um, when it comes to action scenes, the, uh, I love the nightmare scene. We've been over that. Um, just a little side note. If this movie were to, if this series were, were to have continued, the next movie after Justice League would have been an enti- entire nightmare sequence movie. So we would have had three hours in this future apocalypse version of the world. So sad we're not going to get that. We're not going to get it even with Snyder like stepping back in. Probably not. He's, he's Snyder's like come out and said that the chances that he's going to make any, or be able to make anything after this gets released is like slim to nothing. Like it's just a miracle that we even get the Snyder cut in the first place. So I love the nightmare sequence. Uh, I absolutely love the montage of Superman saving people with all of the newscasters like talking about whether or not he should be. Um, and it has like moments of him like saving a little girl out of the fire and all of the people surrounding him and reaching forward and touching him and like almost worshiping him. And then they get into the politics of it and whether or not, like we talked about earlier, he should be doing this or whether every decision you make can, like if you can ever make a decision when you're that powerful and have it not be political and just presenting these ideas while he's doing these things. I just think it was a really cool, really cinematically well done montage of questions that don't get answered through the whole thing until late until uh, he has his conversation with pa kent um up on the mountaintop when he has that little vision um and cosner talks about the dead horses and how you know he asks like do you you know he yeah, we don't need to retread that scene but i absolutely love that scene because that situation that he had on the farm was very rev- relevant to clark going through what he's going through i mean i and not to like cut in but like i also kind of really enjoyed as far as like character development and like motivation something that i talked about like a lot of times not understanding during the movie that is definitely like a point where it makes sense because you literally through those like sequence like the montage sequences for superman you understand literally both sides you understand the batman and the superman side batman's point of view you can see the political side and you can see that superman is very much being treated and not in a sacrilegious sense but he's being treated like a jesus like character like those moments where he's in the crowd like reaching out and like people are touching him he's being treated like a god in a sense and so you understand batman's point of view of this man could literally just take over the world if he wanted to without a problem and i can't allow that to happen and you see superman's side where he is literally just trying to do the good that he can, right? He's trying to be like a savior to these people. He's trying to be a beacon of hope. He's trying to do what he can to help save people in the world. So you do understand both sides, like from one sort of short sequence, you can literally see both motivations in it. So I guess that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I love it. Um, And then I have two other favorite parts. Uh, The introduction of the Batman at the beginning uh, towards the beginning where the cops go into the abandoned house and find all the women imprisoned in, in the basement and they're terrified because there's a demon that saved them and they don't want to leave the prison because they're too scared. Again, it's like Man, Man of Steel when it kind of goes into that horror element, you know. I would love a full movie of Batman being feared and actually getting, you know, that feeling of why people fear him. You know, Batman just being ultra violent because that's my Batman in my head. He does, he will do anything, torture, hurt, scare, whatever he can brand. to get the job done. You know, brand, yeah. That was wild. Like the branch, once you go into prison with that, you're as good as dead. So cool. And then uh, I absolutely, I love, love, I can watch it over and over and over again, the warehouse scene where Batman just brawls with like 15 guys and he's using all of his tech gadgets he's you know throwing out the things to disable the guns he's using his batterings he's and then he's just like freaking a brawler and just takes guys out it's very real that scene because it's yeah he's using all of his tech but it's not this crazy like like people are just flying around he's doing insane stuff it's very like he throws something and it like helps disable these guys but then he's got this guy in front of him and it's not just like like throw this guy like it doesn't matter he's like okay i am facing this guy right now and it's very much like a real like even though he's batman it's like okay 
what do I have to do to 1v1, like, win this fight with this guy or with these two guys? It felt very real on, like, a lot of, like, action sequences can feel just because it gets so crazy and over the top. And, like, we like that a lot of times, right? But this felt like very real fight scene, even though it's Batman. Well, and what was cool is, like, there were times he was down and then he was back up. And also when he uses his, like, gun to, like, spin Superman around. Okay, like, I loved that part of here. Like, I enjoyed, like, seeing that tech as well. Like, the fight right there with between Batman and Superman, so cool in that way that, like, Superman was would dominate Batman and it showed it. But because of Batman's, like, because, like, you see that he does, like, the, he steps on one thing, he comes forward, and there's the machine guns, and, like, there's all these things. And, and like, Batman has put a lot of thought. He's chosen his battleground. It's not just like, oh, we met on the street. Let's fight here. He's like, come to me. Like, I'll light the bat light, and you'll come to me. And, like, even though Superman was like, hey, hold on, Bruce, let's have a conversation, Bruce had finally broken at that point. And, like, the Batman was there to, to, kill or be killed and there was no other option i think he had he'd burned his ships he was ready to go lots lots of scenes i love in the movie what about you is there any other ones that you love casey i also like the the mountaintop scene a lot because i think uh even now like my dad's still alive and living but there will be times when i've like looked back at conversations we've had and like almost like if i'm doing work or if i'm like in my backyard or if i'm hiking like i've had those experiences where like the wisdom of my father has come through and so i felt like that made superman relatable so it makes you like want to like him more and want to do that. I like Lex Luthor. I like all the Lex Luthor scenes actually, because I think that he's such a, he's such like a, a curious figure to me. And in the, in the fact that like he talks about his father and he talks about like, so we're going farther into the impact of fathers here, right? Like abuse of his father and like the brilliance of his father and now how he's taken the company went one way and that he has these visions but he's a when he gets up to speak he's so conflicted and then he goes in and he like is quoting biblical verses and like like using the reincarnation chamber he listened and learned about the kryptonian like past and like listened to their history and stuff like he he also prepared like the lex Luthor part of this film could have been far bigger based off of that information that we were just given but like i don't know and then flash coming through on like a cosmic treadmill was super cool like that's dope and i gotta bring up alfred and batman one more time is like when he's when he has Alfred take over the ship and like they do that in justice league as well. Like he takes over the little crawler for a bit. Right. But like, that's super cool that they work as, as such a team, right? Like it's like Alfred is just as guilty as Batman is in all of this. And so it made it like a little bit more like less of like Alfred, the savior and like the balancing force in what Batman does. But as Alfred, the, the support system, the, you know, the tool, the instrument, the the actual butler to get the job done, you know, not like the, the Lara Croft butler that you could lock in rooms and shoot when you're playing the video games as a child. But I'm talking like the Alfred that gets gritty and dirty and also like gets involved. Gets involved yeah. So we can't have a Batman v Superman podcast without talking about the big controversial moment one that everyone's still making fun of to this day that people will not let down because they hated it so much. The Martha moment where Batman has Superman down on the ground ready to kill him and Superman says, stop, save Martha. And that's the only the only reason that Bruce decides not to kill him was because their moms had the same name. How do you guys feel about the Martha moment? I don't know. Like I was watching it with my buddy and I was like, so you're telling me like the universe would be totally different just because like 60 something years ago, both of these parents are like, Martha, yes, like that's what our child's name will be. <laughs> and way down the line, Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent are battling it out and Bruce Wayne's about to slay the Man of Steel and just this one fact just happens to save the world. I guess I just didn't like I, it just I don't know for me I was sort of like off track and not really understanding like a ton as far as like the movie went and I was like oh yeah there's cool parts and like I kind of understand what's going on but I was like it just seems sort of strange like I was like okay like I get it like you stop and you have like an emotional appeal for a second because you're thinking about your mother 
and it, Bruce Wayne even finds out that like because at first he's like what the heck he's like that's my mom and then Amy Adams comes in and she's like oh that's his mother's name and so even then he knows like oh, okay he's talking about his mom and stuff but then he's like uh okay yeah so I'm not gonna kill you let's like save the world together and so I guess like I didn't understand a ton about it but I would just kind of was like well that was kind of corny like <laughs> <laughs> that was my thoughts be it corny it also it reminds you that Batman also has his soft side in this series that like what would what would he have done to have had somebody or how would he have felt if somebody came in and could save his mother like he was like what a child versus this is a full grown man and like I think Superman at that point recognized that like I could go but save my mother and I think that's a that's an interesting thing and yeah the world would have been vastly different due to uh, the monster at the end who could regenerate and grow and eat nukes for breakfast type thing but like I didn't think the Martha moment was that controversial I was like oh at least something could like get him to calm down thing because because right at the moment right like when batman or when superman arrives to where batman is superman's trying to talk and have a conversation and say hey we need to boom hey we need to boom 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 and like this is all on batman for not listening and so whatever to help him get out of that i don't think is the worst crime that they could have done in the cinematic universe but it also yeah it was just kind of like oh it happened Okay, I'm going to try to change the entire internet's mind on this moment. <laughs> I know they're all listening, so pay attention, internet. <laughs> we'll probably get a lot of hate for this because I, I actually, I don't love it, but I am okay with it. And again, this is filling in context. This is not something that's like presented at face value in the movie. We talked earlier about how this is very relevant to internet culture to this day or culture to this day and how everything's political or uh controversial no matter what it is whether you like a certain pizza or a certain donut someone has will get angry and yell at you over the internet <laughs> i feel like this is like a very good reflection of that again bruce has this idea of who superman is because of the news because of his actions because of his rage he has this idea that this man could because of the nightmare sequence he has this idea that this man could there's a one percent chance that he's taken as an absolute destroy the world or take over the world and he has just held on to that and refused to look at any other angle other than this man is evil and trying to bring us down no matter what even when alfred tells him he's not our enemy he's like no this man is our enemy so anyway this moment with martha for me is the moment where bruce finally comes face to face with a person bruce needed that moment like you said casey to pull him out of this rage and that moment happened to be the coincidence that both of their mothers were named Martha and so when Superman says you know save Martha that like throws him off so much you know why why would you bring that up in that moment how dare you what is what is going on and then Lois tells him Martha is his mother and Bruce in that moment has the realization again filling in context this is all my opinion I don't know if this is really what happened but in that moment Bruce is able to see Superman not as the monster that he has built him up to be in his mind, but another quote unquote human being, even though he's an alien, quote unquote human being who has a mother who is just trying to do good in the world, who is doing his best. And he's able to relate to this person in a way that he wasn't able to relate to him, to him before and see him as not the monster, like I said, and see him as, as something that, you know, if he works with or understands better then he could become a better person as well and it really like changes his point of view and i don't know it's just that moment where he, nothing could get through except for the one thing that traumatized bruce the most in entire in, in his entire life which was the death of his parents the death of his mother and it took that moment of reflection that coincidence to make him reflect on that moment again and be like oh i am in the wrong here i have been in the wrong for the past two years i have judged this person wrong He's just another person like I am trying to make their way in the world. And maybe if we actually have a discussion about what's going on and I get an understanding of him, maybe things will change. And I guess I don't have to kill him in this moment. And then he has a very, very fast change of opinion and wants to be best friends with him. <laughs> and that's where the problem again comes where all of a sudden Bruce Wayne is just the opposite of what he's been for the whole movie. And it's like, Ugh, this is bloated. This is bloated. But OK, I see what you're going for. <laughs> So that's my take on the Martha. I will take my bow and I will take all the anger 
<laughs> that comes to me through the internet because of my stupid, stupid opinion. <laughs> All right, so everyone flood the Pause Rewind Play podcast Instagram DMs with your words of hate for Vince and his explanation of the Martha moment. Vince checks the DMs every Thursday at 3 p.m., so make sure you have all your stuff there by that time. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I, I think that that's a, that's a very curious thought, and I, I, I think that's where we need to close it. I think that that moment of controversy that people are dealing with, like, what would you do? How would you be? Like, you'll never know because you're never going to fight a god. Um but so you think so you think one little fun fact i noticed watching this one through there's a moment at the beginning when lex is talking about getting the kryptonite and uh creating a deterrent for superman just in case he mentions the metahumans um with the political leaders yes. and he says something along the lines of like um instead of we'll have a deterrent instead of relying on the kindness of strangers or the kindness of monsters or something, which is like he's alluding to the idea that the government knows about the metahumans and maybe want to make the Avengers team to fight Superman if it ever happens. I just thought that was kind of a fun little thing that, that I never noticed Because before. he's talking about, he's like, he's like, you don't know if they exist or not. And he's like looking at them. He's like, you know, he's like, he's like, but if you make the silver bullet, like if you craft it, like then you don't have to rely on their kindness. <laughs> I thought it was fun. I never noticed it until this time around. Anyway, yeah. that's all I want to talk about. I love this movie. I love Batman v Superman. I'm sorry that the rest of the world doesn't like it as much as I do because that means I don't get any more of it. I can't wait for the Zack Snyder Justice League and then I will stop talking about these movies for the rest of my life. That's not true. I, that is not I true. I will call your bluff and raise you a new movie. <laughs> Guys, I just want more Aquaman. Okay, that's all I want more of. More Aquaman, but it's like the more cowbell, right? But more Aquaman. Um... Anyhow, like, guys, thanks for getting together and talking this. Uh, next week, we are going to be watching, and I guess if you watch this after um, this has been released, but we are going to watch the re-release of the, Zach, the Snyder Cut of the Justice League, right? And we'll we'll do a podcast on that one, and then we'll put Josh in charge of a couple movies for us and yeah. get into the Oscar zone. <laughs> Vince and I are over here. We love these. We're like, ah, oh, it's just a great action movie. It has some good stuff. And Josh, uh, I've noticed this, and Josh is my brother-in-law, but he likes something with a good amount of depth in it. And I think that's helped me as a, a movie goer myself. So thank you, Josh. But uh, uh, we're going to do one more uh, superhero movie for a minute and then we'll switch gears again. But thank you so much for tuning in to the, the Pause Ryan Play podcast and we will catch you next time.